Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Robbie the Painter here, and this is the beginner series. This is episode three, and we are going to tackle water and land. And in this particular painting, if you watch the first two episodes, we started with your idea, what to paint. You know, that's always the hardest uh, uh, question to answer is, what do I paint? Well, I solved it for both of us today and we just picked a tree. I said, let's, let's, our subject is going to be a tree. Well, we made one tree and then I showed you how to make another tree and another tree and put some sky behind it. And that was pretty much episode one. Episode two was distance and perspective. We took that tree idea and we made farther, uh, you know, smaller trees that are farther away. And we did the mountain range watch episode two if you want to get into the distance and, and perspective. And then in this one, I'm thinking we're going to do a little water. And as you can see, we've got some blank areas of the canvas that we need to figure out what we're going to do with those. And so I'm thinking water, land, finish up our, our ground around these uh, trees. So let's get into it. I'll run the colors right over here that we're using, same colors we've been using. I'm going to dip into a little bit of thinner. Let's go ahead and work on this water. So I'm going to grab a little bit of phthalo blue, a little bit of white. You guys can see that. Yeah, we're going to see what this color looks like on here. All right. Might want to add a little bit of Payne's grade to dull that water, dull that blue down just a little bit. See, I'm getting more of this color that's already on. And this is dry right here. In fact, this, this whole thing's dry. I thought we'd add a little bit of water, a little darker blue on this side of the painting. And a little bit of the lighter. Just changing up the uh, the color of the blue by adding a little bit of white, going into that darker, and then back to the light, coming right over to the tree. And I haven't stood back. Remember I tell you guys, stand back. This one over the branch. Take my finger and wipe that off. All right. Okay, I'm gonna go into a little more of the white. Come across here. Flip over my brush. All right, see if we can add a little highlight down the, down the center of this water. Looks like a lake. And again, this, what I've already put on there is dry, so it's not gonna blend, but that's okay. And I'm using a three quarter inch flat brush. You guys could use just about anything. You could use a little round brush. I think the flat brush is working good. Add a little highlight right across the center of that, that lake. It is winter time right now. We're expecting snow uh, tonight, tomorrow. <clears throat> I'm not, I don't have a cold, but it seems like in the winter time, I tend to lose my voice a little bit. Oh no! We can add a little bit of this water in between the branches on this tree just by touching here and there. Now we know the water, we have to decide how far our water comes over. And I think we're going to make this, this is going to be land here, so the water's not coming over here. So it's going to be this this green hill with these trees that comes down 
to this water shoreline right here. That's what we're going for. So just grabbing a little bit of, of the light blue and filling in right around. Try not to go over your, your tree branches. We're just gonna fill it in. If you do, we can always put the branches back in or do like I'm doing, take my thumb and rub that. We just wanna see a little bit of water through those branches and not just white canvas. And now I'm gonna come right down the trunk of this little tree or this bush, whatever it is. And it had a little bit of water. And this is a little bit lighter blue. This has a little more white in it than this over here that we put on. That's the only difference in the, uh, in the color. Again, it got onto my tree right there, so we're just gonna rub that. And we're coming over here to the shoreline somewhere right over here. Something like that. I'm gonna go back over some of this darker stuff with this light color a little bit, because I'm, I'm kind of liking it. Remember, step back. Step back and look at what you're doing. See how that looks. Yeah, I'm gonna go over my branches, some of them. Let's do that right now. What was our color? It was like a uh, uh, sap green and either Midnight Black or Payne's Gray. Now I've got Payne's Gray on my palette right now, but we're looking for that really beautiful dark green color is what we used on all these. So, tend to be a little more on the dark side. And we're gonna darken up the, the base of this little tree or bush. Okay, let's switch and grab one of my liner brushes. A little bit of thinner, thin that paint down. A little of the paint's gray, a little of the sap green. All right. A little more dark. I think I'm gonna lean more towards the paint's gray. I want. I want these branches to really stand out. Wash our flat brush off, go back into our blue and white mixture, phthalo blue, titanium white, See how light that is. That's pretty light. Grab a little more blue. Just mixing up till I kind of get the color we had right there. And I'm just going back and forth. Same, if the water's level, we're gonna keep our brush going in the same direction. Okay, maybe go straight into the white. And just touch right down the center with some white and then take that Go back and forth. Stand back.
I think the shoreline farther away, remember I, when I was talking about mountains and the farther things, the more distant they are, the lighter they get. We're gonna apply that to our water. So this is really light blue on that far shore. And then it gets a little darker up here as it gets a little closer. I'm just blending this. There we go. Kind of looks like water. Okay, let's move on. I think we're going to fill in some of these bare areas with some green. So let's wash our brush. I'm just going to stick with this flat brush. A little bit of thinner, a little bit of Payne's Gray, a little bit of the sap green. Let's see if we've got... Uh, I wonder if I used Midnight Black when I did this instead of the... Uh, I think I did, instead of Payne's Gray. So we're gonna get a little different tone. All right, a little more thinner. Yeah, I'm trying to match the original color, but it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be. Just gonna add some darks in here. See how the paint's moving pretty good? It's because of the thinner. Just be careful you don't get too much thinner. Let's see, where, where's our land? Stand back, we're gonna see where this all goes. We decide, it's your painting, you decide how it goes. If you don't like it, you correct it. You can always wipe it off or try something else. Okay, so we put a solid color on here of, of the green and the black. We can, uh, we can highlight using some titanium white. highlight some areas that we think might be sticking up a little taller than the other grass. Hill comes up and goes over, up and over. Top of that hill is going to be a little lighter. And since we're using green, we're going to make it a lighter green right over here. So maybe, maybe, maybe. So the, this looks like a little valley right here. So we're gonna leave that dark. Let's grab a little more white, a little titanium white. Just a little on one side. It's all experiment. Let's see. Bring it over here. And just lighten up this area here like it's a little little higher. See how we're doing that? And maybe this whole thing. I got a little too much white, but that's okay. I just stood back and I looked. To me it looks like this goes like this. So this part right here would be higher. This is lower. This is higher. In my mind. So we're going to make the top of this a little lighter. And we have to remember, we put this dark down here to represent the, uh, the shadow of this big tree. 
but I think we're going to redraw in that shadow. We're just, we're trying some things out. Trying some things out. Okay. Go back into that dark green black. Maybe maybe this hill has some some areas of the grass that a little deeper. Okay. Same over here. Take a little dark. Just come up in a couple of areas. And maybe even darker down here in the center. Give the illusion that this is a little deeper. A little deeper valley right here. with that too much just giving you the just trying to show you guys how just by changing adding some light and and I was just mixing titanium white with this green I could you know if you've got cad yellow or we've got uh, Indian yellow here we could change the flavor up of of this this highlight area just adding a little Indian yellow over the top of this white. And we bring that down. This changes the color just a little bit. And we're still staying, you know, it still keeps it light. So it looks like the top of the hill. Here, a little bit of the Indian yellow. Just in a couple spots. Yeah, I kind of like that. It just it just changes and adds. Adds some different flavor to it. For lack of a better word. Alright. Now, let's figure out what I think we're going to bring this dark green right down here by the water's edge. Just fill in a little bit of this and we'll decide what's going on here. All right. I kind of like that. Maybe straighten this out just a little bit. I don't know about you guys, but I'm kind of seeing a path right here. Maybe the path to get up here to this little, maybe it's a little fishing spot or something like that. Or it's where you put the boat in, or you know, you're going out on a canoe or something, and you're gonna go out on the lake. You have to have a little place to get up there. That's what this looks like to me. So, if that's the case, let's wash our brush off. And we may not be done with the grass yet. I'm just, while I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna jump over to this path. While the idea's fresh, um, let's grab a little titanium white and a little of this Indian yellow. There's a little bit of green here also. That's on the palette. Let's see what this color looks like. Okay, so this little path comes down by the water. And then back 
here. Now I'm really scrubbing this in. I don't have too much uh, thinner on my brush. Just when I washed it off and kind of dabbed it on the paper towel, there was still a little bit of thinner on there. But it's working. I kind of like this, but I want it darker. So let's grab a little bit of Payne's Gray and go into this Indian Yellow. Yellow and black will make a green color, but that might work for here. So that, what I'm thinking is this path right here slopes down from the grass on both sides and and that path is kind of down down below that's what i'm thinking so i'm just kind of dragging that in and then maybe over here we'll go a little lighter that uh, indian yellow and white mixture we made let's lighten this up Maybe this is a little cliff right here. Yeah, not quite enough Indian yellow. Let's see here. We'll just pull this straight down. Like that's a little cliff right there. Grab a little titanium white. We're going to come over here and highlight a couple, a couple little ravines, little details coming down off that cliff. Okay, stand back. Yeah, kind of, kind of getting the impression. All right. Just dragging this and I'm kind of going down in a half circle to make it look like these trees are sitting up here on this grass and then it goes down into this path right here so I'm kind of doing a little little half circle type uh, brush stroke right here and we're gonna clean up the path here in just a second and also, let's wash our brush off. We got into our grass up here. Well, we've got sap green. We have a grassy color. Medium, medium dark green. Let's just bring that right back out there to the edge. All right, we'll just fix that. And we need a little bit of green right here. Let's bring that right down here. Again, I'm standing back. I see something. All right. Okay, let's wash that off again and let's really dry it off. Let's bring that farther out into the path. So we want to make sure those little fingers that we're they're bringing down into our path are going the right direction. And these over here. And then we'll just get this brush is fairly dry. Rub that in. Okay. We have our paint palette again. I think we need this, this tan color right here, maybe a little on the dark side too. So mostly Indian yellow, little bit of Payne's gray, darken that up. 
and see. So our water's here. Is that too dark? That might be too dark. A little more Indian yellow. Again, we can touch it and test our color, but we're gonna bring that down. This, this, this grass, this embankment right here, kind of the grass kind of hangs over, I'm thinking. So we're gonna do this. And we're gonna go right up into, into the grass and bring it down to the water. Little half circle motion. Something like that. Yeah, and what we'll do, I think we'll dip into a little white. And put some highlights here and there. Let's grab a little titanium white. I'm gonna turn it, you can turn your brush sideways like this and hold it vertical. Turn it flat. Just gonna put the indication in a little water line, shoreline here. Make sure our water line's running the right way. I just want that to disappear. A little bit thinner. Back into this Indian yellow, kind of a light, try to get this light tan color. Coming right over into my tree. I need to darken up this side to where this comes down. And we don't see as much of this side because this is the top, this is the top of the hill, so it drops over and into the path on this other side but we might see a little bit of the dark. This dark Indian yellow feathering in from this side. Just coming out into the, uh, into the path. Wash our brush, dry it off. Let's go into Mostly Payne's Gray or Midnight Black, whatever dark you have. I think I used Midnight Black when I did all this other stuff and I've got, I've been on a Payne's Gray, a Payne's Gray kick lately. Uh, it's become, I don't know, I'm, I've been obsessed with it, using it a lot. This tree comes, we're just gonna rough this in, a general shape. And this side has a branch that comes out and up like that. So basically, our tree goes like that. And there's some leaves up there, leaves here leaves here. Trunk here, trunk straight down. This big branch goes off that way, we take it off this side. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then we're just going to kind of take our brush and go back and forth. Just diffuse that a little bit. It's a shadow, it doesn't have to be perfect. Now it might get a little darker right up here by the tree, because this tree is blocking. We're gonna assume the sun is out, out here somewhere. We don't know, we didn't put a sun in there. And then while we're here with the black, I'm going straight, Payne's gray, maybe. I'm just, with my three-quarter flat brush, I'm just holding it vertical 
and using the very small part of one side. Like there's a bush growing next to this tree. Just the indication there. Just something else we can add. And I stand back and I'm seeing a little, like I can add some more shadows here and there. I want to leave this, this front part of the, see to me that looks like a little cliff right here that drops, drops down. We want to keep that light if our light source is out here somewhere. We'll keep that side of the cliff. These are darker underneath the grass here. This is a little darker. Now, what do I have? Uh, let's grab a little white. Let's lighten up this green. Maybe a little bit of Indian yellow. Green, Payne's gray, little white, little Indian yellow. Let's see. Just come along the top of this grassy area and just kind of redraw in the top of that grass there. We got a little walking path, gets us down to the water. I think I'm gonna leave this part of the sky just, just like that. Looks like our light source is coming from over there and, uh, and shining this way. You know, I think I'm gonna show the indication of uh, some more leaves down here, more branches. So got a little bit of green on already on my brush. I'm just gonna dip into some Payne's Gray, for that dark color. And we'll put the indication that there's some, the clusters of, of leaves up here on the tree. I don't know if it looks good. I think it does. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. All right, uh, this is the wrong brush, but hey, let's see if we can do it. Try to flatten it out. Add a couple birds up in the sky. I think we're I think we're about done. I'll just go into titanium white, and we have a signed painting. Well, there we go. Another episode showing you guys how to take a painting in stages, even if you let it dry like I let this one. And we could add some more things and show you how to take one of your paintings that you like, but you're going. You know, I wish I could add something to it. Or how do I make things look farther back? How do I get that distance? All my stuff is right up in front. Bunch of bushes, couple trees, and a lake. And you might be saying, you do that over and over and over. Well, switch it up. Switch it up. Add some more distant stuff in your paintings. Stare at that empty canvas like I do. <laughs> Think about stuff in your head and go, you know what, I think I want a tree on, on a hilltop. That's gonna be the focus. Everything else is gonna be kind of blurry in the background. Tree up on a hill, I don't know. I'm just saying, think about stuff and, uh, and then do it in layers if you need to. Start off with just, you know, again, if you have trouble with sky and clouds, don't put any clouds in. Just do a light blue sky. The lighter blue that you go, here's another uh, tip for you guys. I know I'm, I'm kind of dragging on here at the end, but I think you'll like this. If you do the light blue sky, look how these trees and everything else stands out against it. Light against dark, dark against light. I say that over and over, but you know, Bob Ross used to say that. Lots of painters that way more talent than I do and actually went to school and learned how to paint. You know, for me, it's trial and error. So that's that's what I'm doing. But I uh, think this was fun. Hope you guys learned something from this. Thank you so much for coming back. Carol and Sherry and Sherry, my family. I appreciate each and every one of you. Love you guys. 
I will see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.